right, I wanted to take a minute to show you guys these are some of the more common small fossils that we find in the Sulphur River where we're up there hunting. If you're going to be serious about collecting in the Sulphur River in Northeast Texas in general, by the way, this book is indispensable. It's actually a guide written specifically for the North Sulphur River, published by the Dallas Paleo Society. Not sure if it's still in print or not, but if you can get a hold of a copy, it's great to have. And I'm not saying that just because a few of my fossils are in here. It's actually a very handy field guide. Now, my bigger Sulphur River fossils, I'll be honest, I don't hang on to generally. They take up a lot of room, and usually I run into somebody that wants them more than I do, and a little cash changes hands, and the vertebrae goes home with uh, its new owner. But I do keep a selective tray. I use this while I'm taking my kids to the Sulphur River every year. I take my seventh graders every year so they can see, because mostly when we go in September, the river's picked over, and what they're going to find is small stuff. So I'm showing them what these little micro fossils look like. Uh, I have a whole set of encodus here. You might remember the encodus from episode two. Uh, we find a ton of encodus teeth down in the sulfur, one of the most common fossils. You can also see this is an actual piece of uh, encodus jawbone that still has the tooth attached. So that shows you how they attach onto the jaw. And then here is from the back part of the jaw where one of the smaller teeth was coming up. Uh, we do find shark's teeth in the sulfur. They're not as common there as they used to be, but you still find them from time to time. And nearly every year when I take my seventh graders, a couple of the kids will find shark's teeth and go home with a nice shark's tooth uh, as a souvenir. You find these little fish vertebrae, which can be anywhere from this size up to about this size. And this is just a single backbone from a prehistoric fish. Every now and then, now this is really cool, you'll find some fish vertebrae that are still fused together. Here are three linked vertebrae, and they've still got the dorsal arches coming off the top of them. That's a pretty rare find, so I held on to that one. You also find a lot of these little turritella gastropods, basically different species of snails. You find the longer ones, and then you find the more traditional snail-shaped ones, like that. We do find lots of mosasaur vertebrae. Most of them are fairly large, but this is my smallest mosasaur vertebrae. This one was probably a newborn only two or three feet long when he died. Uh, might even be in utero, it's hard to say, but it's very rare to find a mosasaur vertebrae that small. They're usually about as big as your fist. Another very common sulfur river fossil, uh, this is a baculite shell piece. Uh, they're a long tapered shell and they've got little suture marks where the pieces of the shell fit together. And then we find enamel from larger teeth. Uh, from bison and mammoth and mastodon, just little slivers. This is a shark vertebrae. They're thinner and flatter than a fish vertebrae, and unlike fish vertebrae, which are made of hard bone, shark vertebrae were made of cartilage. Matter of fact, the only part of a shark that regularly fossilizes are these discs from his back and his teeth. Everything else is soft tissue. And then I have several mosasaur teeth here. This would have been a uh, fairly large, probably Tylosaurus. You can see it's damaged on the backside. Undamaged mosasaur teeth are hard to come by. And then I have a number of smaller ones here. Here's the day that I found the day I took the crew down to the Sulphur River uh, in episode three, I think it was. So anyway, some of the more common fossil species of the sulfur, at least of our smaller fossils, and then also the fill guide to the North Sulphur River fossil beds. Very handy book if you want to get into collecting. All right, I'm Indiana Smith. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. This is the Mosasaur skull that I discovered with my seventh graders a few years ago. Then on this last page, here is a mastodon molar that I found with my friend John Schultz back in 1990, and also uh, a Pleistocene muskox skull, which is the largest and most complete ever found in Texas.